Okay. Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. I have with me, uh, this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Aaron Ackerman, Executive Director of the Ohio Association of Elections Officials. And um, Aaron and I have been talking about um, uh, questions from the perspective of the voter. So um, I have a, a question that hopefully doesn't happen very often, but, um, or hopefully never, but um, I'd love to hear the Ohio perspective from uh, what should a voter do if somebody has voted in my place? Uh, what would be the, the Ohio uh, situation or the, well, tell me what you think. <laughs> sure, Sean. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Yeah, let me kind of talk about like the likelihood of that happening. And then if that unfortunate event does occur, let me kind of walk the voters through what we'll do at the Board of Elections to remedy it. Um, so first of all, we have really strong voter identification laws in Ohio. We require either a driver's license, state ID, or some form of identification that includes your current address, be the utility statement, a bank statement, a government document. We largely mirror federal law on that requirements. Um, those requirements, um, we just kind of use their list. Uh, and then we, uh, in addition to having all that information at their disposal at the polling location or the early vote center, uh, we're gonna ask you to sign your name and we're gonna compare your signature. And uh, obviously there are reasons why signatures might change, but I think that's a really strong requirement in our law. In fact, a, a federal judge just upheld uh, that that continued to be a requirement for voters to provide their signature because I think that um, to your question, Sean, that's voter impersonation is not something we should ever tolerate and signature matches is, is a good deterrent. But if for some reason you showed up and someone had claimed to be you and had voted there, uh, we are going to ask you to, to cast a provisional ballot um, because we don't know at that point if you're the impersonating the voter and the actual voter already did vote or right. not. But clearly someone got there and had the requisite identification and the signature was a good enough match that they, they let it go through. So we're going to have you cast a provisional ballot. And what we will do is we'll go back and basically arbitrate that after the fact. So we'll right. hold that for 10 days um, and we will go back. We may contact you, ask you for some information. The Board of Elections has pretty broad powers to investigate these kinds of situations. Um, so the bottom line is, you know, we're going to do our absolute best to get to the bottom of it and get the correct vote counted because obviously we want every vote, legitimate vote to count. Um, so there are, I think we have strong processes in place in the event that that does happen. But again, I just want to reiterate, we have really good identification laws to prohibit that from happening in the first place. Excellent. So if I hear you correctly, it sounds very similar to if I showed, if I arrived in my name wasn't on the registration list and I said it should be. Um, no, I believe the correct process would be I would cast a provisional ballot and they try to get to the bottom of why it wasn't on the register. You nailed it. It's, it is the exact same process. You nailed it 100%. That's exactly what we do. And there's nothing wrong with casting a provisional ballot. It's people are under the mistaken impression that if you're asked to cast a provisional, it's not going to count. In reality, we have a very high percentage of our provisional vote count, mm -hmm. uh, votes count, and typically if a provisional vote doesn't count, it's because the person wasn't registered in the state of Ohio or they were in the wrong county. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, but typically um, we do count those provisional votes. It just requires, like you said, a little TLC, a little investigative work on our part at the Board of Elections because there's some question about your eligibility and we just want to sort through that. And we have 10 days after the election, we have adequate time to do the necessary work to make sure that we're getting every legitimate vote to count, whether it's by a regular ballot or by a provisional ballot. Now that process, which I, I believe is uh, most places called adjudication, um, uh, where they go through and, and double check um, all the options in most states, um, and, and you can tell me if Ohio is similar or the same, is that um, they will actually hold up the election results until all the adjudicated, all the provisional ballots have been adjudicated. Is yeah, that that's a great as well? That's a great question. And it's actually a really hot topic, not just in Ohio, but nationally. It's still like, when are we going to know the results? So what we do in Ohio is um, on election night, we release what are always unofficial results. And that includes basically all the votes that come in at the polling location, any absentee ballots that we've received up until election day and election night. Um, and we, we take all those ballots and we release the unofficial results. There's mm -hmm. always a subset of those provisional ballots uh, and any absentee ballots that have been postmarked before the day before the election, but eventually work their way in through the mail system and arrive at the board within 10 days after the election, those will get counted. Um, again, in Ohio, 
Um, we call it the official certification or the official canvas. And those are the official results. And we are not allowed in, in Ohio uh, to release those until sometime between, I think it is uh, 11 and 21 days after the election so that we do allow all those questions, you know, the ballots that there are questions about to come in and be adjudicated and be factored in to that final official count, which we will release. And that's, that's what determines the winners and losers in Ohio. And, you know, 99% of the time, the unofficial results mirror up exactly with the official results. But there are times when you have really close races um, and those few ballots that are still trickling in, be they absentee or provisional, make a difference and, and results could change. And that doesn't mean that anything nefarious happened or that anything went wrong. In fact, it means that every vote got counted and that's a good thing. Excellent, excellent. Well, this is great. Thank you very much for your time, Aaron. This has been Lincoln Shorts.